Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we all stand in the house of the Lord and give him a hand clap of praise? Just thank him for this opportunity to be in the house this morning. Come on, everybody, let's give the Lord some praise in this place. We magnify you. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, let's worship the Lord in the house this morning. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. I can see the light coming. I can see the day dawn. Yeah. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be.
what a day it's going to be. Ooh. I'm thankful for this place. I'm thankful for each and every single one of you that is in this place today. There's something about when we come into unity together and we just start praising praising him for all the things that we go through and all the things that we deal with on a daily basis. But when we come in here together and we worship together, there is a unity, there is something that rises yes. up that says the enemy has no hold on me. Right. But I got brothers and sisters in this place that when I come into this place, I can lean on them. I can worship through my battles. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the freedom that is in this place this morning. Amen. The Lord is truly wanting to do something in this place today. Oh, I'm thankful. Let's just give him another hand clap of praise because he deserves it. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. We're going to get a, if we can get the ways to give on the board. We got, you can give in person. Give LaFi. You can do a mail at 1031 Mill Street, PO Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. We got text to give, 833-883-9311. And <clears throat> at the end of service, we're going to do a relief offering. So, let the Lord be praying about it and just let the Lord lead you in what to give from the heart. Because what we give has to come from the heart. It has to mean something. The Lord has given us so much and he has blessed us beyond measures. And I just want to give accordingly to the way that he wants me to give. So if you would, by faith, let's say this prayer together. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given unto me. Rest down, shaking together, running over. I am a tither and I give my offerings. I'm bringing them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing, there's not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income. Rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received. My whole family saved in serving God, birth and health in abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Come and give. Turn it in your favor. Just watch him work it for your good. He's not done with what he started. He's not done until.
said my heart panteth after the water brook so my so my soul panteth after the Lord I, I'm thirsty for everything that he is I want everything that he is Amen. fear is not my future he is yes. everything the enemy is telling me is not my future he is That song, just as I sit there and think about it, I don't have to stay the same, but I can be changed. I can be different. He can turn it for good. I was in prayer this early this morning in the past few weeks we're going into a time of prayer and I'm going to share something that I've been praying David said create in me a clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me and do you ever just get desperate you ever just read the word of God and Lord, I, I just want so much more. I, I look into the perfect law of liberty and I want to continue in it. Lord, I, I don't just want a bandage on my heart. I want a new heart. Be, because the, the word says that you can create. Do something new in me. Don't just patch this up. Do something new. Is there anybody ready for something new? Are, are, are you? Are you tired? I, God, don't just touch the situation. Change it completely. Do something different in me. For, forget everything on the outside. Do something in my heart. I, I'm desperate for that. Brother Noah, I, I'm hungry to be like him. Till everything that I am is consumed with everything that he is. I didn't come here to stay the same and I didn't come here to go through the motions and, and, and I'm not coming to prayer just to say a few words and leave His presence the same, Brother Tripp, but I'm going to be changed. I'm speaking it in my heart and that the woman with the issue of blood, the Word says, she said within herself. I'm saying within myself, if I can but touch the hem of His garment, things can be different. Before you make your way this way up front this morning, if you'll say within yourself, if I can just get in His presence, 
I'm going to speak to the fear in my heart and say, if I can just get it to Jesus, it can be different. I can be different. Things can be different. Fear is not my future. Sickness is not my future. Can we seek the Lord this morning with our whole heart? Is there anybody desperate for a touch of God? Is there anybody desperate for a healing? Because He can do it. Are, are you desperate for Him to touch your family? Because He can do it. Oh, come on, He can do it. Come on, Fa Father, we come before you so humbly. Lord, I, we're not praying for a bandage, but we're praying, God, create in us a clean heart. Do something new in us, Lord, that you've not done before. God, we, we're desperate to break out of the routine. We're desperate to break out of going through the emotion, the, through the motions. And we're desperate for your presence. As he said, God, cast us not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from us, God. We want you. We want you. There's, there, there's no cute way to put it, but God, we're desperate for everything that you are. God, we're desperate for pastor to bring a word. We're desperate for the gifts of the Spirit to work in this place. We're desperate for healing. We're desperate for breakthrough, but we know that you are a reward from those who diligently seek you. That is your word, and we're standing upon your word. We're standing on this, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to your purpose. God, we are a church that's filled with your spirit. We are a church that's baptized in your name, and you are for us. Despite what we go through, despite what we face, you are for us, God. And I pray for healing. I pray for breakthrough. I pray for the stability of our minds in this place this morning. God, break through. Break through our insecurities. Break through our walls until we're different, until we're changed in this place this morning. From the beginning, you've been unchanging, age to age you stay, constant you remain, every The questions I carry are safe within your will, so I'll trust you even still.
Have your Bibles and turn with us to Matthew chapter 4. And then we'll move to Matthew 14, Matthew 4, 18 and 19. The old song says, take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me on, let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. There's such a beautiful presence of the Lord in this house right now. I'm so grateful for our praise team. So grateful for our ministry team. I'm so grateful for everyone that worked so hard. This week we fed the football team. Sister Judy, Sister Betty, Sister Michelle, Sister Sheila, and Sister Sherry, along with Kevin and Freddie <laughs> cooked the food and carried it out there, and it was good. And, and when this church experiences the revival, it's going to experience, because we ain't there yet. When this church experiences the revival, it's going to experience, it's going to be because we're all working together. And we're all doing our part. At the end of service, and Brother Tripp will expound on it a little more, uh, we're going to receive an offering that we're going to send to the East Coast, uh, North Carolina, East Tennessee, some in Virginia, and uh, along with our prayer to those people. If you're able and you would, please stand in honor of the reading of the word of the Lord. Thank you for coming today. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Matthew 14 and 22 and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. In verse 28, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And I'm going to preach for a few moments. If it be thou, bid me come. If it's you, bid me to come. Pray with me right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, I've seen you today. 
I felt your presence today. I felt your spirit today. And I do know that you have an agenda for this house today. For everyone that's in this house, I pray that you will anoint us to deliver an anointed word. And I pray, God, that the revelation will flow. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that the encouragement of the Holy Ghost, both coming from you to us and welling up inside of us with your spirit, will be activated and experienced today. Help us preach just a little bit. Help us preach and receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Brother Blake. This has happened one other time, but the Lord gave me this message sitting in the graveyard. And I'm not a weirdo or nothing, but the graveyard happens to be across the street from where my wife goes to the doctor. And uh, I sit in the graveyard because they don't hardly have room to park. And I was there, and the Lord began to speak to me. What caused Peter to even think the thought? <coughs> Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. What, what was it that caused him to... That makes exactly zero sense to me. Because in effect, I think we would say, Lord, come be with us. Come to the boat. This is the place that it's safe. But Peter answered and said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Jesus is somewhere doing something that only Jesus can do. And Peter says to him, if you call me, I'll go. What happens if Jesus doesn't call? What is going on in Peter? Impetuous or headstrong, stubborn, willing to be misunderstood. I said willing to be misunderstood. People preach that what Peter did was good. People preach that he should have never went. People preach that he lost faith. And people preach that he's the only one had enough faith to get out of the boat. People preach that he lost his focus. People preach that he got up and got back in the boat. But I've never heard anyone preach about his willingness to be misunderstood. Misrepresented, misinterpreted, maligned, envied, just to follow Jesus. He said, I want to be where you are. And I'm willing to risk everything to make that happen. If it is you, bid me to come. The invitation from Peter to leave the boat was the proof. Peter has now been, in, ah, Holy Ghost, come on now. Peter has now been invited to go where no one else has ever been, to a place no one else has even had the courage to ask to go. Peter has manifested a desire to be a part of something more. We are drawn to comfort. We are drawn to familiar. We are drawn to acceptance. We are drawn to happiness. We are drawn to belong. But who is drawn to the unthinkable? Who is drawn to the incomprehensible? Who is drawn to the impossible? Who is drawn to the unknown? Are we willing to be drawn to Jesus from one place in the storm to another? To a place where the contrary winds won't stop blowing. Peter's introduction to Jesus, as we read to you in our first scripture text, was Jesus spoke to him and said, follow me. It was in response to this call that Peter did exactly that, leaving everything to follow Jesus. It's the same for each of us. I said it's the same for each of us. We don't always know what it is, but it's always there. That indescribable pull by some unseen force, pulling and calling. And without a preacher or without the guidance of the word, we try to satisfy that longing with any number of things. And truthfully, we're not too prejudiced about what we use to satisfy that longing. And many times with the first touch, the first taste, the first high, the first feeling, we think we found it because it feels so good. It must be right. But as we have now become accustomed, time 
showed us that we were mistaken. When the euphoria recedes, we are left with nothing but scars and the same calling, drawing, longing, pulling, and it won't leave us alone. Peter and his fellow disciples are in a boat. Now, the Bible calls it a ship, but I have been privileged to, to see one of these ships that have been uh, excavated, found in the shores of the Sea of Galilee. And truth is, Brother Billy, to call it a ship is a misnomer. Uh, it's a, to call it a boat is an insult to a John boat. Um, these are very, very primitive boats. And the disciples are there, but that's what they fish from. And they are in this particular boat because at this particular time, Jesus called them to get in the boat. He urged them, in fact, compelling them, just short of ordering them, get in the boat, you go across this sea, and I'm going to meet you on the other side. But that, as is common to the Sea of Galilee, a sudden storm has risen up and riding on the wings of a contrary wind is the accompanying notion, everything is against us. Riding on the wings of a contrary wind is the accompanying notion, everything is against us. And they fought against everything. They are skilled fishermen and skilled sailors. The sea is not unfamiliar to them. They know it will pass. Just maintain your course. Soon the wind will slow down, the waves will stop, and peace will come. But in the middle of the storm, Jesus comes walking on the water. This is not a Jesus they've seen before. It's a new Jesus. It's not a Jesus that they put on pictures at Christmas or put on pictures at Easter. It's a new setting. It's a new place. It's around 3 o'clock in the morning. They are weary. Still in the battle, but weary. Jesus comes, but he's over there. And they don't see clearly. Vision is clouded. Vision is impaired. The sea and the, the weariness and the being worn out. They have little, if any, strength in reserve. And it's taken everything they have within them simply to maintain. And they see Jesus walking on the water and they are afraid. We have no reason to believe that there were less than 12 in the boat. The 12 disciples chosen on purpose to be the disciples of Jesus Christ. And when they got afraid in Matthew 14, 27, straightway Jesus said to them, hey guys, no need to be afraid. Be happy, it's me, I'm I'm here, don't be afraid. In the middle of a struggle, and we see Jesus. The wind is still in their face. The waves are still rising and falling. And in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the uncertainty, in the middle of now new fear that's been introduced, one man, Simon Peter, temperamental, impetuous, headstrong, rough, ignorant, by any of society's measurements less than but one thing he knows, Jesus called him, and that's what Jesus does. If there's any doubt, if there's any doubt about what's going on here, see if he will call me to come to him, because that's what he does. He calls. So Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. It's a true test. The drawing in times of uncertainty and fear. The most natural thing to do when you're afraid is to run. But when you move into this arena where Jesus works, uh, nothing natural makes sense. Uh, and it's not a, a call to run. It's not a call to get away. But it's a call to come closer. Yeah. At all times, the call... Ha! At all times, the call of Jesus Christ is to come unto me. That's why the devil spends all of his time waving his arms and distracting, and he makes things pop up, and he makes things happen, and he tries everything he can to get us off our course. Because there's Jesus right in the middle of our struggle, 
And he's calling. I would argue that it was not Peter's impetuousness that said, if it's you, bid me to come. It was that desire that's always been in him to wherever Jesus was, I've got to go. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. It is something that's inherently in him. It is that pull of reconciliation that was destroyed when man sinned in the garden and separation became the penalty. And it looked like that hell won. But when Jesus Christ came, put on the flesh of a sinful man, and became the sacrifice for all of humanity to which God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. He's calling. Peter has left everything to follow Jesus. Even here, in this storm, in this boat, on this sea, when you leave everything to follow Jesus, you have no option but to follow Jesus, and you have no option to find a way to follow him. That's why he's here. If it is Jesus, he's calling me. If it is Jesus, he's calling me. The 11 didn't get it. Over 2,000 years later, preachers and saints still don't get it. It is because we still have hope in something else. We have hope in our talent or in our ability or I feel it in the Holy Ghost right now. You got to get delivered from it today. You got hope that some man is going to bring what's missing in you or some woman is going to bring what's missing in you. And we have got to get baptized with a holy desperation that says only Jesus is going to be able to satisfy my soul. Oh, I feel a little hindrance, but I also feel a little preach rising up in here right now. The only reason you still hold, I saw your face right now. I see you in your predicament right now. And I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is drawing you and saying, it's only going to work when I'm everything. The only reason we still have hope in something else is because we've not yet made the decision to leave all and follow him. Hear this, Peter didn't have much to risk by getting out of the boat because he had already forsaken everything to follow Jesus. The reason why he can't lead us to the place of fulfillment that we desire is because we haven't yet forsaken everything to follow him. And so follow Jesus he did. Verse 29 of Matthew 14, and Jesus said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the what? To go to Jesus. While ago I stood over here. This is not in my notes. This has not been rehearsed. I have not discussed it with anybody. But what would have to happen for Jesus to walk on the water. For Jesus to walk on the water, he would have to be willing to obliterate the laws of nature. Because water is not solid. It is a liquid. And a human being is a solid. And any solid that does not have buoyancy will sink in a liquid. But Jesus stepped out and walked on the water. And here's what the Holy Ghost told me to tell you a while ago. I'm preaching to a church that about three quarters of you are already walking on the water. About three quarters of you are already, no, 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 no. No, about three quarters of you have already defied the laws of nature. The laws of nature said you were a loser. The laws of nature said you were lost. The laws of nature said you would never be anything. But when Jesus stepped into your life, you begin to operate in a realm that was impossible for you. You didn't have the money for it. You didn't have the pedigree for it. You didn't have the ability for it. You didn't have the talent for it. But here you are today. And you're walking on the water. Here's my point. It makes about as much sense for Peter to walk on the water 
as it does for some of you to believe you can preach. It makes about as much sense for us to say Peter can walk on the water as some of you do believe and you can teach. That you believe and you can be a witness. Believe and that you can step out of your seat with your scars and with your weakness and with your failure and lift your hands up to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he doesn't just throw some fairy dust on you, but he comes down and puts his arms around you and he calls you by name and he speaks into your life. That's what it means to walk on the water. You see, that is what we do. Because walking on the water ain't the goal. But if that's what it takes to get to Jesus, then walk, baby, walk. Because if he calls... That means he's made the water a street. He's made a water the highway. And the reason he calls it is the reason he came. Come unto me. Verse 30 of Matthew 14. I'm almost done. Don't open your mouth like you've seen a ghost. because I want to be done because I've got to be done would you be honest with yourself this morning and acknowledge that call and acknowledge that you've tried everything you have tried everything we have the people in the room that have tried popularity that have tried prestige that have tried a lot of money, that have tried elaborate trips, that have tried promiscuity, that have tried everything, drugs and alcohol, gambling, all of it, and it didn't work. But here's my whole message. And if it concerns you that I preach too short today, come back next Sunday. I ain't going to make a habit of it. But I got a message today you've got to get. Verse 30. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, Lord, save me. Now, I can't tell you 100% for a fact what the deal was because the Bible doesn't say. But sometimes people say, took his eyes off Jesus. That's why he fell. Sometimes people say he was too big for his britches and should have stayed his behind in the boat and he'd be all right. That's why he fell. Lost his focus. That's why he fell. I'm going to give you this to gnaw on. I think he fell because he got close to Jesus and the storm didn't stop. I think when he got close to Jesus... You see, I'm getting close to Jesus, Brother Kevin, because when I get close to Jesus, he's going to fix everything. He's going to make everything all right. So that's why I'm coming to church, and that's why I'm trying to get this Holy Ghost, and that's why I'm trying to repent. I'll even get baptized. But the storm better quit. something brother David the storm didn't quit when Jesus got a hold of his hand right. 
Now, I know y'all practice this song with the whole crew. I don't want the whole crew up here. If you can handle that, all right. I'm not telling you what to do. Don't. <laughs> Jesus did not come to calm the storm. He only calmed the storm when their faith wouldn't operate otherwise. If you had enough faith to get out of the boat, you have enough faith to keep walking on the water in the middle of the storm. See, it can't be Jesus because he speaks to storms and when I come to him, the storm stops. No, Jesus says, he says, you can't believe like I need you to believe unless you can come to me and let the storm rage on. The only thing I need to be afraid of. The only thing I need to fear is if he doesn't call me. So I will step out of the boat. I will walk on the water only to get to Jesus because the storm doesn't change him. And if I believe I'm going to him, the storm doesn't change me. I was sure by now that you would have reached and wiped our tears away Stepped in and saved the day But once again But once again I say amen I say amen And it's still raining And it's still raining
our hands for one more moment. Praise Him in the storm. Praise Him wherever you're at. Just praise Him. Praise Him for what He's done in this place today. Praise Him for the word that was said. Praise Him for the freedom that's in this place. Hallelujah. We love you so much. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. There is such a sweet spirit in this place. Amen. I love that song. I love every word that's said in that song. Hallelujah. Amen. If you can find your way back to your seats. Got several announcements this week. Well, I want to let you know tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. is ladies' prayer meeting. So if you're a lady and you, uh, you've you never been to a prayer meeting, come tomorrow night. Trunk or Treat is October 31st from 5 to 7 p.m. Please let Sister Amanda know if you plan to have a booth or table. Um, only wholesome themes. We were, all, we're also going to need candy, so we're getting that in. Section 4 Harvest Rally is Sunday, October 20th at 6 p.m. at Jesus Name Tabernacle in Crothersville. Uh, Reverend Chris Green will be there. He's a mighty man of God. You don't want to miss that. Pumpkin decorating contest starts today, and that's only wholesome themes also. All pumpkins are due at the church no later than next Sunday, October 13th. So if you've been decorating a pumpkin, you could start bringing them today, but at the latest, next Sunday, you want to get them in. Voting ends and the winner will be announced at the end of service on October 27th and the money goes to Aaron Pays Fund. Sister, St Sister Stacy Stanley will be speaking in Dyersburg, Tennessee on Sunday, October 20th at 2 p.m. Any lady that's wanting to go, please let her or Brother Shannon know and that address is at 250 Youth Home Road. So uh, if you want to let them know if you're going to be able to make it. Our next ladies' night will be Tuesday, October 15th at 6.30 p.m. It's going to be the theme of portrait painting, and this is for fun. You do not need to know how to paint. You ain't got to be that good. It's all for fun. Please text PAINT to the church number to register. And as always, bring your own drink. Starting this week, October 10th, Parma Recovery is going to be on Thursday nights. So our recovery is going to be on Thursday night for New Madrid and for Parma. Um, so you want to keep that as a reminder. There will be a Sage's Potluck, ages 55 and up, on Saturday, October 19th at 5 p.m. Please let Sister Judy know if you're coming. And Sister Amanda will be speaking at that. So Saturday, October 19th at 5 p.m. And there's going to be a church hayride. Uh, Saturday, November 2nd, meet at the church at 5 p.m., I know in the past when we've done that, it's been such a good time, a fellowship, and we've always had such a great time. It's You don't want to miss it. Good camaraderie, laughing, yeah. just fun. Um, and also, we're, we're going to go ahead and do birthdays and anniversaries real quick. Anybody have one of them this last week? <coughs> Amen. I know we got an anniversary. Birthday.
Let's go ahead and sing to our birthdays real quick. If y'all just stay standing. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. Brother Richard and you, Sister Meredith, will stand. We'll sing happy anniversary to y'all. A happy anniversary to you. A happy anniversary to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. Happy anniversary to you. And the best one you've ever had. Amen. And as we're closing, uh, you can go ahead and stand. As we're closing, closing, this pan up here at the front is going to be for the hurricane relief. So if you have a, if you have an offering that the Lord's laid on your heart, I, I know we've all seen the videos. We've all seen what's happened. And, I, you know, I've had things happen in my house, little things here and there, and that cost adds up bad. I couldn't imagine losing everything. Um, and the videos that I've seen have just been horrendous. So... We, if we, you know, the Lord blesses you if you give. And, I, and no matter what's been given to them, I believe that the church can give and make a difference and be an impact. Right. You know, Dad's always talking when we give to missions and when we give to all these different things. Our church is going all over this world right. by giving that offering. Amen. And we're going to pray here at the closing for that offering. And I'm going to believe that God's will is going to be done. And we're going to see people restored better than what they had before. Amen. Homes are going to be rebuilt. I've seen landscapes that were, that were messed up. God's going to make something out of this. Amen. So if you will, let's pray and, and give as, as service is over. You can come up here and continue to give. I just want to say real fast that uh, we're going through Reach Out America, okay, which is the United Pentecostal Church's relief efforts. And everybody who works in that fund and manages that fund does so on a voluntary basis 100 percent of what you give will go to this relief effort nobody's getting a salary nobody's getting a kickback 100 percent brother damesworth is the point man for reach out america for this uh hurricane tragedy so please don't be hesitant 100 percent of the money brother wayne huntley is on the board Brother Ken Gurley is on the board, and these are very reputable men. And all of your giving will go to this effort 100%. You can give with great confidence. And one last thing, too, is if you give on Givelify, please put in the memo, Hurricane Relief. And uh, if you give a check or anything, put it in the memo for Hurricane Relief. Hey, Amen. Let's pray over it right now. God, I thank you so much for this service. Thank you for this day. God, I thank you for the, the revival that's coming to, to southeast Missouri, not even just this church. But, God, there's something moving and something changing in this place. So thankful, God, for it. I just pray, Lord, that you'll go and be with us. Lord, I pray that you bless this offering. Bless us as we give. God, I pray that overall we see revival across the nation, Lord, over the east coast. I pray that you, you help people build and restore, and, and everything is going to be so much better, Lord. You can take something that's tragedy and take something that's so bad and make something good for it, God. There's going to be testimonies that come forth. We're going to see blessings in our own lives and in our own homes from giving. And I pray, God, that your blessings be upon it. Let the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost lead us and let it be with us, God, as we give. And keep us safe until the next appointed time. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be dismissed.